Tadasana, Mountain Pose. So pause after these standing poses, stand up straight and tall. Take this time to feel your mountain pose. You're pressing more into your heels so the weight of your body comes back over your ankles. Stack your hips, shoulders, and ears over your ankles. Roll the shoulders back. Now inhale into chair pose. Bend your knees and sit back. Take your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to create a flat back. Lengthen your spine, legs strong. Plant the hands, step or jump to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Roll your shoulder tips back as you open the chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. From down dog, step your right foot close to your right thumb. Angle your back foot down. So you want your back foot turned in a little more than 45 degrees. Make the back leg straight and then inhale, come right on up for warrior one. Squeeze your right hip in. Lift through all four sides of your waist. Reach with the arms. Exhale, bring your hands back to the mat and step back to chaturanga. Inhale, point the toes back, upward facing dogs. Legs are strong, inner knees tight. Exhale, downward facing dog. From down dog, on your exhalation, pull your left knee up and step it close to your left thumb. Angle the back heel down, squeeze your left hip into the midline, come right up the middle, reach with your arms, back leg straight, lift your side chest. Exhale, bring your hands back to the mat, plant them, step back into chaturanga. Low plank, everything in line with your elbows. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Pause here, steady your breath. So we just created a lot of heat in the body with chair pose and with warrior one. So balance out that heat, use that heat to start to move deeper into your poses. All right, now bend your knees, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, get length. Exhale, take all that length and fold deeper. Inhale into chair pose, bend the knees and sit low like you're in a little chair and take the arms up. Exhale, bring the arms to your side. Inhale back into chair pose. So we're gonna create a flow now. Exhale, fold forward. This is called Sun Salutation B, Surya Namaskar B. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your right leg, warrior one. Close to your right thumb, turn your back heel down. Same thing we did last time, bring the arms up. Moving with the breath, exhale, bring the hands back to the mat. Step back to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step the left leg, warrior one. Turn your back heel down. Inhale, come up slow with your breath, reach, there's no rush. Exhale, hands back to the mat, step back into a low plank, that's called chaturanga. Elbows in, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. So this vinyasa practice or breath with movement practice, this is uh, designed to build heat in the body so that you feel safe to do your standing poses so your muscles are warmed up when we move deeper into the postures. Continue to breathe. Even though you're no longer moving, you're just pausing here in Downward Dog, let the breath flow. Now let's step the right foot and come up for Crescent. So in Crescent Pose, your back heel stays up. It looks like Warrior One, except the back heel stays up this time. Lift your back inner knee, squeeze your right hip in. Okay, now lean your chest out over your knee. Try to feel a line of energy from your back heel out through the crown of your head, shoulder blades on your back. Lean your chest forward until you start to lean and balance. Pick up your left leg. So you're balancing on your right leg. Lift your left leg up to hip height. Bring your hands forward maybe. It's a challenge, don't let your belly drop. Keep your low abs lifted. Good, then step back into Parsvatanasana. Step your left foot back about three and a half feet. Ground the heel on the mat like warrior one, and then fold forward over your right leg. As you press your right big toe mound down, draw your right hip back and in. Now let's step back to downward facing dog from here. So plant the hands, step back, down dog. Let's do it on the other side. Step your left foot in between your hands, close to your left thumb. Inhale, come up for crescent. So the back heel stays up. It's just a lunge with your arms up. Take a breath here. 
drop your arms to your side, lean your chest out over your left knee. Your back leg is strong, your left hip hugs in. Now keeping your left hip hugged in, step up and balance on your left leg. Stack your left hip right over your ankle. Level your hips and your waist to the floor. You want your right toes to point straight down. Now hold here. If you want to make it more challenging like you did on the other side, take your arms forward. It's not a requirement. Hands can stay at prayer. Hold here. Good. Now plant your hands on the mat. Step back your right foot about three and a half feet. Put it on the floor. And try to straighten your left leg. Instead of pushing the knee down, think like you're pulling energy up into your hip socket. So lift your thigh bone up into the hip socket and pull your left hip crease back and in. All right, now plant your hands, step back, downward facing dog. You're welcome to add vinyasas throughout these. If you wanna do like an extra chaturanga, up dog, down dog, that's fine. From down dog, look in between the hands, step or jump forward. Inhale, get length. Exhale, fold, let your head drop down. Inhale into chair pose. Oh, no, actually, let's come into a squat. We've done enough chair. So squat down, and we're going to try an arm balance now. You're going to put your knees way up high into your upper arms. You're going to squeeze the knees and the arms. See if you can just lean into your arms like your arms are doing chaturanga. And you're going to look forward and start to balance. Maybe the arms can start to go straighter like I'm showing in the video. Now look forward, step or jump back to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. It's kind of a tricky pose. If you didn't get it down, just keep practicing. From down dog, shift forward into plank position. Shoulders over your wrists. And then let's roll onto the outer edge of the left foot and take the right arm up. So this is just like doing mountain pose, but turn on its side with the arms spread. So you want to create, keep the activity of the feet. Press through the heels. Roll your inner thighs back and your tailbone down. Press through your heels and lengthen out through the top of your head. All right, now bring your right arm back to the mat, right hand down. Let's go right to the other side. Roll into the outer edge of your right foot, take your left arm up. Make the leg strong, squeeze the thigh muscles to the bone, firm the buttocks to the heels, and lift up your belly as you lift and broaden your top chest. The neck is long, so feel length in the spine. Bring your left hand back to the mat, back to plank, press straight back to down dog. So in my own practice, I don't like to do too many vinyasas because the repetitive uh, nature of it can start to cause injuries if not done really well, but you're welcome to add these vinyasas if you like. All right, bring your hands to your hips. With your right leg straight, come on up. Press into your back heel, take your left arm up, and then reach forward halfway. Put your left hand down on the outside of your foot, turn your chest and take your right arm up. So it's called twisted triangle pose. Back heel is down like warrior one. Now I didn't have a block today, but I normally like to use a block underneath my hand because it's too hard for me to get my hand down and get the full expression of the pose. If you want to use a block, just put a block underneath your hand, it might help. From here, let's move into twisted half moon. So slide your left hand a foot in front of your foot, squeeze your right hip in and lift the left leg up to hip height. Pull your chest forward as you press through your back heel. Open up, spread your arms. Now stay even on the right foot, squeeze the right hip in so it's right over the ankle, and as you inhale, look for more length from your back heel to the top of your head. All right, now bring your right hand down and take your left leg up from the inner thigh, standing splits. If you want to play around with balance, you could try bringing your hand to your right ankle, lift the leg a little higher, and lower your left leg to meet your right, fold forward. All right, now squat down on your heels. We're going to try it another arm balance. So this one's called Twisted Crow. So in this one, I bring my hands to either uh, the side of my right leg, and then I see if I can hook my knee into my left tricep and maybe balance on my arm. Keep the elbows hugged in like Chaturanga. Ooh, and then maybe even try to stretch your legs out. A little tricky variation, Ekapada Kundinyasana. From there, lower your toes back down to the mat, come back to your squat, fold forward, inhale, lengthen, Step or jump back to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, roll the chest open. Exhale, down dog. So don't worry if you can't do those arm balances, just keep going with the practice. From down dog, step your left foot in between your hands. Step your back foot a little bit closer and turn the heel down. Straighten the left leg, put your hands to your hips and come on up. Inhale, take your right arm up. Exhale, fold forward halfway. 
set your right hand down on the outer edge of your foot and turn your chest up to the ceiling, take your left arm up. Keep your back heel anchored. As you press your left big toe mound down, squeeze your left hip in. As you anchor your back heel, lengthen from your tailbone to your crown and turn your chest. Maybe even look up if the balance is good. I just like to look straight ahead though. Now look down, put your right hand a foot in front of your foot as you bend your left leg, step up to balance. Lift the right leg up to hip height. Now get even on the left foot, press into all three points in your left foot, the big toe, little toe mount, and the center heel. Squeeze your left hip in, and now as you inhale, lengthen from your right heel out to the top of your head. Push through the heel, pull forward, and turn your chest, reach your arms. Now bring your left hand back down to the mat, and take your right leg up from the inner thigh, standing splits. If you want to play around with balance, you could try bringing maybe one hand to your left ankle and taking that right leg higher up. And then lower your right leg to meet your left. Squat down. We're going to try that arm balance on the other side. So I turn my belly to the left. Put your right arm on your left leg. So try to hook the knee of your left leg way up high towards your right armpit. Then lean into your arm and maybe pick up your feet and balance. Hug in on your abs. So hug your rib cage in and down, lift your pelvic floor and low abs so you're engaging your abdomen. Maybe take your legs open, stretch them out. Okay, now come back to your squat. Inhale, lengthen your spine, create a flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Let your head hang. Inhale, lengthen out again, exhale, step back to plank, lower the knees, sit your buttocks down to your heels, child's pose. So extended child's pose, the big toes are together, take your knees just wide enough for your torso, your ribs to fit in between, stretch the arms out. All right, now moving right along, inhale, come on up, and we're going to do a preparation for headstand. So to do this, I want you to put your elbows underneath your shoulders like I'm showing. I interlace my hands, I curl the toes under, I lift my knees up. So this is called dolphin pose or down dog on the forearms. I'm pressing the center forearm down. I lift the hips up away from the elbows. And then notice the shoulder blades, the upper back is pressed in. So you want to move your upper spine in. You don't want your upper back to round here. See if you can walk your toes in closer like I did without letting your upper back round then lift the hips up higher. If that went well, that's gonna show that you're ready to do headstand as long as you have that control of your upper back. So if you wanna stay here, just work on that control. It's good to hold it for about a minute. If you're newer to yoga, it's gonna build the strength that you need. If you're working on headstand, I've showed going into headstand here. So you can lower your head, bring your knees into your chest, balance, bring the knees up, and then take the feet up, headstand. What's important is that you're pressing down into that forearm. So from the elbows to the wrists, you're pressing evenly. If your head is down, you're right on the crown of the head. Same thing in Tadasana. Press through the heels, inner thighs back. Tailbone lifts this time, lengthens towards the heels, and those ribs draw in. All right, now come back down and rest in child's pose. So I like to take a variation of child's pose with the arms back after your head stand. Let your head rest. So if you decided just to work in that down dog on your forearms, that's a great preparation pose. In fact, many days I actually just practice holding that instead of headstand, just to work the arms, the upper back, create the alignment I need necessary to be able to do headstand. All right, let's inhale, come back up onto the hands and the knees and move back into downward facing dog. So especially if you did headstand, this is a pose to help to release your neck. So just let your head hang. All right, now let's look forward. Ooh, jump through to seated. Tricky jump through. If you can't jump through, just step, whatever you gotta do. Lie on your back. And once you're on your back, we're gonna prepare for bridge pose. Bring your heels close to your buttocks, feet hip width apart, press the heels down, lift the hips up. If you're using a mat, take your four fingers under the mat and your thumbs on top so you're gripping the sides of the mat. If you don't have a mat, you could just grab a strap or a shirt or interlace your hands. Now pull out with your arms spin your biceps out and turn your triceps, that's the back of your arm muscles, towards each other. This external rotation of your arms will help you to open up your chest and the shoulder blades will plug on your back more evenly. Press the arms down so you activate your back muscles necessary to hug the blades in. 
keep the neck long. Now as you press your heels down, squeeze the backs of your legs and your glutes towards the backs of your knees. Keep the inner thighs down so the thighs stay in that neutral position that we talked about earlier. If all that's too confusing for you, just think about pressing your heels down, lifting your hips up. That's enough. All right, take a break. Lower down, take a breath. And go right back up into it. Press your heels down, lift your hips up. Hold here. This is a great pose to strengthen the backs of the legs, which is important for your posture, that the backs of the legs, your glutes are strong. Keep your knees in. If your knees are knocking out, you got to bring them back in towards each other, so line up with your ankles. Now again, pull your heels towards your shoulders so you squeeze the backs of your legs. Release your inner upper thighs down, but then squeeze your buttocks to the backs of your knees. All right, lower back down, take a breath. We're gonna do one more of these. This time with the hands interlaced. So press the heels down, lift your hips up, interlace your hands. Come on, get those hips up. Now keep the neck long, try not to strain in your neck. Your arms are interlaced, you're pressing the arms down so you could lift your chest more but keep squeezing and lifting your buttocks up. All right, now lower the buttock back down to the mat. Take a breath. So if you have a different variation of that posture, like you wanna do Urdhva Dhanurasana or Upward Bow, you're welcome to try that now. Otherwise, it's enough back bending. Bring your feet into happy baby. So bring your hands onto the insides of your knees, grab a hold of the outsides of the feet, and take the feet up towards the ceiling, but let the knees drop down. See if you can let your tailbone buttock drop back down to the mat and then lengthen out your neck. Your neck's gonna kinda gonna try to pull in, so think of moving the back of your skull further from your shoulders here. So you let the spine elongate on the floor. All right, now hug your knees into your chest, apanasana. Bring your head up to your knees and roll up to seated. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Sit in dandasana. Just like mountain pose, it was important that we establish a good mountain pose. This seated pose, dandasana, is important for all of your seated postures that we'll do. So press the heels forward, roll the inner thighs down, lift through all four sides of your waist. Now let's bring the right knee into the chest, hug it in and sit up tall. Try not to let yourself sink. Wrap your left arm around your leg, put your right fingertips behind you. Roll your right shoulder back, open your chest. Now first I look for the length, so I pull my knee and I try to grow tall in my spine from the tailbone to the crown, I'm sitting up tall, and then I look for the twist. Always in twist, the length comes first. You wanna get length even between all the vertebrae of the spine before you start twisting on them. Otherwise, we run into problems with the twisting. Keep the left heel active like in Dandasana and turn your chest. All right, now let's come out, straighten the right leg, back to Dandasana, seated staff pose. Sit like you got to stick up your back. Bring your left knee in towards your chest. Hug it in and sit up tall. Remember, first the length and the twist. Wrap your right arm around your leg. Left arm comes behind you. Again, inhale, sit up tall. Then exhale, turn. You can even turn the gaze here to help with the turn of the chest. The right leg stays active like it's still in Dandasana. The inner thigh rolls down. You're lifting through the four sides of your waist and turning your chest as you hold here. Breathe steady, inhale length, exhale twist deeper. All right, now come out of the twist, look forward, stretch your left leg out so you're back in Dandasana, seated staff pose. The staff is like it's up your back, that's why it's called seated staff. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, take all the length that you've created and reach for your feet. This is called Paschimottanasana, Western Intensive Stretch Pose. The sun salutations are done facing east, so the back side of your body is considered the west side of the body. So in this pose, the full back side of the body is being stretched. So once I grab my feet, I inhale and lengthen, and then I can exhale and fold deeper into the pose. Deep stretch, inner thighs release down, the front of the buttock bones press down into the mat. And then I try to lengthen the whole spine. There's a tendency just to round out in the upper back. Try not to let yourself do that. Try to lengthen the whole spine, head towards your feet. Now inhale, come back to Dandasana. And slowly roll yourself down one vertebra at a time all the way down onto your back. Turn your palms to face up. Let the feet splay open. Take a deep breath in. 
and let it out. Shavasana. So you worked really hard in this practice. You built a lot of heat in the body. You want to give yourself this time to relax. This is your final meditation. It's a very important part of your practice. In this final meditation, let all the muscles of the body release. From head to toe, just let your body drop into your mat or wherever you're lying down. Let go of the control of the breath. So throughout the whole practice, you're trying to breathe steady in and out through your nose. You're trying to balance the length of the inhale with the exhale. Now just let go of that. Instead, just watch the rhythm of the breath and how it affects your body, your energetic response to it. Observe this flow of energy, this flow of breath without trying to change or control it. I'm just gonna do that for the next few minutes. Watch the body relax and let yourself move deeper inward past all the layers. Let yourself move in.